Hello, you two. Let's see how this goes. We have Indy here and he's eating. And he's having a really, really bad day because he's teething. So he's enjoying a mess of food he just put on the floor. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Uh, before I get started on what I'm going to talk about today, which is a variety of different questions that I got on Instagram and Tumblr and email, and they were all about um, breastfeeding and what I feed Indy and what I feed Selkie. And before I get started on that, <laughs> I'd like to talk about these awesome shoes I got. They're by People, and I got them from Shoemi.ca. This is not sponsored. They did not give me this for free. I just really like these shoes. <laughs> so these are the shoes I got. They're incredibly lightweight. They're absolutely amazing. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Is it gonna focus? Maybe not. There we go. All right. So these are incredibly lightweight. They're completely vegan, and I'm absolutely in love with them. They are black on black, which matches everything in my wardrobe because I only wear black. Um, they're durable, they're lightweight, they're breathable, and I love them. And so does Indy, apparently. <laughs> and being the amazing wife I am, I got my husband this pair. He chose these, he loves orange. Um, they come in a whole bunch of different colors. They have things like lilac and purple and white shoes and whatever. They have basically any, every color of the rainbow and they're absolutely amazing. I really suggest these. If you're vegan, go check these shoes out by people. Really, really cool shoes, really love them. So check them out. And shumi.ca is a Canadian's website and they have tons of coupon codes right now kicking around. Um, so go check them out. I believe these shoes cost me like $60 and I got my husband's for free. So <laughs> that was pretty neat. Okay. So today we're gonna talk about breastfeeding and veganism. And so this is very appropriate. <laughs> um, I get asked a lot if I'm still breastfeeding my daughter, if I'm breastfeeding Indy, obviously I'm breastfeeding my eight month old son. <laughs> um, this is Indy by the way. Um, and he's teething, so it's changed our, our, the way we breastfeed significantly. With every tooth that comes in, we have about 24 hours where he has to get used to the latch, the new way of latching, and it doesn't hurt me at all. So never be scared of teeth, I'm sure he'll eventually maybe bite me, but we'll cross that road and I'll discuss that when we get to it. Um, but our breastfeeding relationship has been great since the beginning, though there was about two weeks, there were, yeah, there was about two weeks in the beginning where it was incredibly painful. And I did actually breastfeed my daughter, but that was, that was almost four years ago now. And you know, things change. So my nipples, I think, had to get used to breastfeeding all over again. It was very interesting. I actually almost went and paid a lactation consultant um, to look at my latch because it was hurting so much. And my midwives, I was, I had Indy, Indy was born at home. Um, my midwives thought my latch was perfectly fine. They couldn't figure out why it was painful. I personally think it was just because my nipples had to get used to breastfeeding again. Um, and what other questions did I get? Indy, both Indy and Selkie are completely vegan. Um, Indy has been vegan since the beginning. Um, he eats things now like smoothies and anything we're, we're eating. Yes. Anything we're eating at home, he eats. Um, so if I eat pasta, he eats pasta at this point. He's eight months old. So he has, he, he currently has four teeth, <laughs> four teeth are fully in and it's been like two weeks in two weeks. He's gotten these four teeth. So poor, poor little guy, but he eats absolutely everything. He's very aggressive about eating and has always been aggressive about eating. He loves food. He loves boobing. <laughs> um, He's in his 90, I think it was 95th and 98th percentiles for uh, weight and height. So obviously vegan babies can thrive. If your baby is not thriving, and that happens even to non-vegan babies, it could be anything from what they're eating or genetics. Um, I have some friends who have 
like they their doctor said that their babies had a failure to thrive and really all it is is that the doctor thinks the baby isn't meeting its milestones and that could be for a variety of reasons um, I'm more of a <laughs> I'm more of a 50 50 sort of person I believe in holistic medicine and I also believe in medicine actual medicine things like antibiotics and stuff when you absolutely need it so <laughs> sometimes I meet doctors who haven't had the proper training in certain areas. So instead of prescribing like an ointment, they could prescribe coconut oil and it would be just as effective, if not more effective for some things. So that's just me. That's just what I think. Um, but yeah, Indy is thriving. Selkie is thriving. Selkie was a vegan pregnancy. So I was, I was vegan the entire time I was pregnant. Um, and she is doing absolutely amazing. She is vegan at home, but she is not, I, I'm led to believe this, she's not so vegan when she visits her biological father. Now he's asked things like, what does she eat? But he is a complete omnivore, <laughs> has always been an omnivore, and so has his family. He has a couple of vegetarians in their, his family, but they're they're like vegetarian in the sense where they eat, still eat fish or they s still eat things like cheese. And some of those things are not very vegetarian. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, you have pescatarian things like that, but don't call yourself a vegetarian then. Um, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, he's, he's not feeling very well today. So this is a hard video to film. Would you like something to look at? How about a shoe? Shoes are cool. Okay, so this is the stuff I take. I took this when I was pregnant uh, with Indy. It's called Rainbow Light Prenatal One Food-Based Multivitamin. This is vegan and it's gluten-free. I have to be very careful about things that are gluten-free because I have celiac disease on top of being vegan. So if I can be vegan, anyone can be vegan because it's harder for me. So there you go. I've also been soy-free vegan at certain times in my life. So there you go. And in regards to the soy-free stuff, mainly it was like I was getting acne at a couple of times and I thought it was the soy. It turned out it wasn't the soy. That's why I was soy-free, not because it's not good for me. I eat tofu all the time now. Um, so. Let's see, will it pick it up? There we go. That's what it looks like. Um, so this is not readily available in Canada for me. I live in Canada, I live in Ontario. And so I order Rainbow Light from Amazon and they've been great about sending it to me. Um, it's a little bit expensive, I think. I, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for this, but whatever I paid, it was very much worth it. <laughs> so I still take this um, right now as I'm breastfeeding. I think it's very important to take a multivitamin or a prenatal vitamin while you're breastfeeding. Things like um, calcium and B12 are very important while you're breastfeeding and vitamin D, though the vitamin D you should also give your baby vitamin D drops. Well, focus, focus, vitamin D drops. I don't know if you can see them, but these are vitamin D drops. I give Indy one, I'm supposed to give Indy one a day. Of course, I don't always remember to do that, but he is obviously very healthy and thriving. <laughs> um, so yeah, I take these Rainbow Light prenatal ones. Uh, I take one a day and they're, they're a pretty good bang for your buck at 150 tablets. I mean, this lasts me months and months and months. I've gone through maybe two or three bottles at this point, um, and I'm still taking them. And I'll take them for a while while I'm breastfeeding, definitely. So things like calcium are very important while you're breastfeeding because it gets transferred into, in the milk to the baby. Um, vitamin D, not so much. That's why you need the drops as well, though some of it gets transferred. It's, it's from the research I've done, it's like up in the air how great this is. Um, and vitamin B12 is also very important. So people are led to believe that they need to eat meat to get vitamin B12, but actually they don't. It's, it's, I eat nutritional yeast. I have like a big 
bag of nutritional yeast. I dump it on everything. It tastes kind of cheesy. It's amazing on pasta. I'm, it's making my mouth water right now thinking about it. But it, vitamin, uh, vitamin B12 is very available on a vegan diet. And I get it in fortified almond milk. My children get it in fortified almond milk and things like that. Indy eats whatever I eat. So he's getting it both from breast milk and in the food he eats. Um, so it's very easy to get vitamin B12 on a vegan, in a vegan diet. And to top it off, the vitamin B12 that people get when eating meat is actually injected into the animal. So there you go. It's not readily available in the meat. It's not naturally occurring. They are injected with the vitamin B12 so that it occurs in the meat. So if you are telling me that things like vitamin B12 on a vegan diet is like a natural, like it's really hard to get and stuff. Guess what? Your meat is getting injected with vitamin B12. How natural is that? Like vitamin B12 is supposed to be naturally occurring in soil. The problem with this is that all our soil is so farmed by this point, it doesn't occur in the same percentages as it used to in the soil. That's why we have to take these vitamins or eat fortified food with it. So there you go. <laughs> and as for calcium, calcium is very important. You can get it easily in fortified almond milks. You can get calcium in broccoli and spinach and plants. It's super easy to get. Same goes for iron. There's actually more iron in plants than there is in meat. And for some reason, Western society has made up all this stupid stuff about iron being better in meat than it is in plants. Oh no. It's a hard day. It's been a hard week. Very, very hard week. He's been up at 3 a.m. today, 5 a.m. and up throughout the night. And you know what? I'm back on to breastfeeding. Um, breastfeeding is hard work. It takes, I've been doing it for eight months now and I did it for seven months, sadly, with, with Selkie. But then I had to stop because I was a single mother and I had to go back to work and it just, just did not work out. I did not have the support or I would have breastfed her until she was two at the very least. And I plan to breastfeed Indy till he's two at the very least. And I think it's very important. The WHO talks about how breastfeeding till two years of age is amazing and says that you should at least breastfeed your baby until they're six months old, at least. Um, what doctors tend to do around a year old is they say things like, oh, you can give your baby cow's milk now. And I really don't agree with that. Why would we go and say, sure, give your baby some cow's milk from a whole, total a breast milk from a totally different species that isn't suited to your baby or us? It makes no sense at all. Um, and I really don't get why doctors push it. Though, after getting paid by the dairy industries and our backwards government, that, that does make sense. It's just not right. Um, so that's mainly why I'm planning to breastfeed Indy until he's at least two, it's because I'm the same species as him and my breast milk is suited to his needs. Right now, because he's not feeling well, my mama, and he's teething, my breast milk has probably changed to help him better adjust and like give his body what it needs. When babies are sick, mother's breast milk contains antibodies for the baby to feel better. Um, as a baby grows up, so like right now, I have very fatty liquid gold breast milk and it's beautiful. But as Indy grows up, he's not gonna need the fat as much because he's gonna be starting to eat more foods that contain fat. And he's gonna get more and more of his calories from actual solid foods. But right now, he gets most of his calories from my breast milk, so he needs all the fat right now. So, I know, I know. He woke up from a nap, and I thought he was feeling a little bit better, but this is not the case. Mama, mama. And this is what my life is like. This is my life as a mom. I take care of my kids, and they are number one, and sometimes it's hard to film videos for my Wednesday video <laughs> upload and take care of my little ones and he's my priority so 
I'm waiting to the last possible minute to film this. <laughs> I've been waiting all week to film this, so I'm trying my best here. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Um, Andy eats absolutely anything we eat. Um, he eats everything at this point. He eats um, completely vegan, mostly gluten-free because I'm gluten-free. And most of us are actually, the sulky to Indy and my husband Joseph all eat kind of a gluten-free vegan diet, even though they don't have to, just because I don't like to have to cook multiple meals for everyone. So it just, it just works out like that. We mainly eat gluten-free because they like to support me, which is really nice. <laughs> Um, and it's better for them in a way. I don't, I don't think, oh babies, oh babies, there you go, I know it's hard, I know it's hard. Um, I don't think, I'm not gonna get into the whole like wheat belly controversy stuff where people are like gluten is bad for you. I don't think gluten is bad for you. I don't think gluten is bad for everyone. It's bad for people with celiac disease and people with intolerance towards it. And people who think that celiac disease is made up. I've laid in bed and cried and not been able to eat for days. I have lost a significant amount of weight just because of stomach issues at one point or another. And um, let me tell you, celiac disease is not made up, it hurts. <laughs> I have been t diagnosed twice just to double check that I had celiac disease because I couldn't believe it. When I was diagnosed, I was um, 21. And so that was many years ago. And there was no, the celiac disease phenomena <laughs> wasn't really mainstream. So I could barely find any gluten-free vegan food to eat. So there you go, not made up. Um, I think that was main, most of the questions I got. Um, I got other questions regarding bed sharing and baby wearing and things like that. Um, but that's a whole other video because I could get really into the topic about how I think Western society is really screwed up with what they think is acceptable and how to treat their children. I do not believe that people should really put their babies all alone in their own room to cry it out at night and things like that. Um, I don't think that makes any sense. So yes, I'm a weirdo <laughs> vegan mama activist who breastfeeds and cares about animals and cares about what she eats and her family eats and doesn't want to leave this planet worse off than when she entered it. And that's me in a nutshell. Kombucha. <laughs> and yes, I do drink kombucha while breastfeeding. I also drank it while pregnant and that is also uh, like something that people talk a lot about, like whether they should drink kombucha while breastfeeding or while pregnant. And I, and I've always, I've been drinking kombucha probably for about seven years now, seven or eight years. And so my body is so used to it at this point. I just kept drinking it when I was pregnant. And it was one of the only things that actually made me feel better when I wanted to vomit at the beginning of my pregnancy with Indy. So there you have it. That is, I think kombucha is totally okay while I'm breastfeeding. I don't drink a lot of it. I don't get drunk. There's hardly any alcohol in it. Um, and I drink it mainly because of my stomach issues and because I like the way it tastes. We also do our own homebrew. So that's a better way to understand what's in your kombucha if you want to mix it yourself and stuff like that. I usually with our homebrew, we usually don't even mix it with juice or anything like that. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> and that is, I think, all the questions I got about breastfeeding. Um, that if our children were completely vegan, things like that. Um, yeah, I think that is it. There you go. There you have it. Um, next Wednesday, I will be putting out another video. Hopefully this video is better quality because I decided to get a better camera. So I sold a whole bunch of stuff on Kijiji and was like, now I can get a camera from Kijiji that's even better than my Macintosh camera. So there you go. Here's a whole new video. If you like this video, please subscribe down below. And I will see you next week.
and hopefully this video was a bit informative for everyone who asked me questions. If you want to ask me questions below, I will answer them readily and steadily in another video, I promise. Um, thank you very much, and have a great week, guys. Bye. Thank you.